So you have a pre-built gaming PC and you wanna make it suck less. Well, this is the right video for you. So what we have here today is an HP Omen 40L. It's got pretty decent specs. It has an i7, 12700KF and an RTX 3080. So a pretty high-end pre-built. However, it kinda sucks for real. So how do you upgrade a pre-built? Well, what people usually do in those tutorials online is upgrade the RAM, upgrade the SSD and really nothing changes. Of course you wanna have an SSD and of course you wanna have at least a 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM, sure, but anybody can do that. And generally going with more RAM is just a waste of money and it's not gonna increase the performance unless you saturate the RAM. What you really wanna do is increase the thermal headroom because those pre-builds run a very tight thermal headroom and how you do that is by using a better cooler and or better paste and or very much what people don't do, better thermal pads. So what we have here today from Jellied is a 240 millimeters all-in-one water cooler, some quality thermal paste, and thermal pads. So we are gonna convert this pre-built PC to water cooling using the original chassis and repaste and repad the GPU. You might be wondering why. Well guys, let me let you take a look at the temperatures at stock of this PC. That's pretty much brand new. Okay, let me show you. Pretty simple hardware monitor. We have here CPU-Z and we're gonna start the very easy stress test of CPU-Z. Now let's take a look at the CPU temperature and let's see what happens, okay? Again, this PC is basically brand new, remember? Now, as you can see, we are already approaching 80 degrees, but let's give it a few seconds to stabilize. As you can see, we hit power limit and now the CPU down clocked to 65 watts. So this might give you the impression that the temperature is actually pretty good, but let me show you what happens if we load something more serious, like Prime 95, small FFT. I have just started it and the PC immediately hit thermal limit at 95 degrees Celsius and it will stay there until it cuts back again at 65 watts with a major, major loss in performance and clock speed. So the CPU is dramatically overheating, but seeing how bad the cooler is, I'm not surprised. Let's take a look at the actual GPU. We are simply using Heaven Benchmark, a relatively light gaming test, and we're gonna have it run for a few minutes and come back. And as you can see, right after a few minutes, we have already hit close to 100 degree on the hotspot, 94 on the memory, 75 on the core. Now these are not too bad, but they're definitely not good with the fan this loud. So we are simply gonna go and repaste. Now step one is to actually take off your GPU, which is pretty simple. They generally have a few screws there and they might have an extra mounting bracket right here. Then you have to just disconnect the cables, you can get to work but I will leave you with the montage.
And just like that, we fixed the GPU. Again, pretty simple. Repaste and repad. In this case, we use the gelid stuff, very good materials. And we managed to drop five degrees on the core, which might not seem like a lot, but it's actually quite a bit. And 20 degrees on the hotspot which is important, that's what affects throttling and the life of the car, as well as a nice 10 degrees on the memory by simply replacing the pads right on top of that. So I'm really happy about it. At this point, as you can see, we went forward and upgraded the CPU cooler as well. So what we did there was simply unscrew the ugly Omen stock cooler that everyone has in their pre-built, and we went ahead to install a full custom all-in-one water cooler. Now in this case it was a bit tricky so on top we had space for true 120 millimeters fans but a radiator would not fit in there so what we did is we moved the stock fans from the front to the top and then we mounted the radiator on the inside on the front going to put new fans on the outside of the front and we actually used the gel fans on the bottom because as you can see it has this very odd design in which you can see through the glass just two fans then we put a corsair fan on the top to aid with the cooling so we now have a total of six fans in the pc i also went ahead and put a nice iTech rgb fan on the back that's just for aesthetic reasons obviously but upon doing that you remember the cpu was going all the way up to 95 degrees right well now it doesn't even reach 75 degrees with the fan speed at minimum. The PC is now completely silent and we dropped 20 degrees off the CPU. We were also able to fully unlock the power plan, the performance, and just go into the BIOS, do what we do in our general undervolting videos and just unlock the CPU completely. So we are also getting a massive five strike score right now, as well as a slight increase in the CPU Z score. So as you can see, if you want to upgrade your pre-built, you should upgrade the cooling in your pre-built. And jelly products are great. So those are the conclusions for today. I hope the video was helpful. Please comment if you need help to fix your pre-built. I can give you a few pieces of advice. And drop a like and a sub. And see you on the next one, guys. Bye.